this thing through this pit. Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. Best way to catch more bass when you're positive. Come on, guys. Another tip video today. You guys love the last one, so we're about to, I'm about to give you some more juicy stuff today. What's going on everybody? Welcome to another video. Thank you guys so much for the support. Thank you guys so much for clicking on this video. Today I have another tip video because the last one, you guys loved it. You guys learned a lot from it. You know, it was something unique that really no one does. So it was different. I hope you guys took those tips, applied them on the water, or on the pond, wherever you guys went to. And I caught some fish on them, obviously. Well, today what I'm going to be talking about, best way to catch more bass when you're pond fishing. So this is going to be very basic. Like this is very basic, but it's something that you guys need to watch. So I highly suggest you watch this whole video through just because I'm not just gonna be talking about what's the most effective way to catch more fish while going to a pond. But I'm gonna be applying some more tips throughout the video. And I think you guys are gonna enjoy it. So let's go ahead and get this started. Um, as you guys can tell, I have my old beautiful filming pond right here. We're about to go out there and I'm gonna show you guys how to catch more fish. So everyone, every time I come, you know, I usually come to this pond, it's either, you know, I'm filming some little tip videos or I'm just filming a little pond fishing video or, you know, I'm having like a little 1v1 challenge. And before usually many of those even happen, I can already tell you who I'm gonna win against or what's gonna happen just because of this one basic tip that I use everywhere I go when I'm fishing. I'm telling you, this is a super effective way. It's very basic, but it's just gonna be covering water because I, I, I see everybody Every time I go to a new pond, if I see somebody there fishing that, you know, I don't know, I just see them out there fishing, they're in the same spot. I mean, they're sitting there and they're just casting in the same spot. And by the time they're literally done fishing that same spot, I've already fished the whole pond. And I can promise you I already probably have five, six fish to their one just because I'm covering a lot of water. Now, I know a lot of people are gonna say, you know, some days it's gonna be very slow and you're gonna have to slow down. And I understand that because that's gonna happen. You know, some days you're gonna realize that the fish are just truly not gonna be able to bite. But relating this towards ponds rather than lakes, for the most part, if you're just gonna go around and cover a lot of water, you're gonna catch fish either way. If it's a lake, it's gonna be a lot different. If those fish are shut down, you know, fish on a lake are much harder to catch. It's not like pond fishing. Pond fishing in a way is like shooting a duck in a barrel to, a, to an extent. If you guys haven't checked out my last video over the tips i highly suggest it i'll link it below but pretty much one thing that i really talked about in that video pretty much the most versatile bass fishing bait as in working it on the bottom working it on the top this and this and that and i taught you guys a new way to catch some fish pretty much about while bringing one rod to a pond and that is really the main reason why i only bring one rod to a pond because i'm covering a lot a lot a lot of water pretty much what i'm doing is i'm just walking and casting yeah, I'm just walking and casting like this. Just like this. You don't see me. I'm not stopping at all. Woo! There we go, baby. That fish seemed a lot bigger when I hook set him, I can tell you that. That is a baby guy right there. <laughs> that is like the stubbiest fish. But aim it at the water, straight 10 pounder. You see that guy, straight giant. Let me show you guys what I'm throwing. So I'm throwing an actual, just a standard old Texas rig. Like I showed you guys in the last video, add a little um, speed crawl or rage crawl on that Texas rig. Well, today I'm switching it up a little bit and I put a Reaction Innovations little dipper on there, which is just a baby little swim bait. It's actually my one of my favorite baits of all time, definitely in my top two soft plastics. And I simply Texas rigged it because I'm gonna throw this thing. One, I'm limited on tackle. Two, I'm gonna throw this thing on top, on bottom, reeling this thing through this fish. As you guys can tell, it's just super, it's nothing sexy at all. I mean, it's so basic. But when you're pond fishing, I'm telling you, it's just, you don't know, you don't need all this fancy stuff. People think, oh, they need all this super expensive, you know, tungsten weights and trocar hooks. Listen, I tell you, I, Every time I go pond fishing, I don't even, like I have a lot of expensive tackle, but that's tackle that I'm gonna take on the lake with me. Like I'm not bringing it out here on the pond. I, I just keep it so basic and simple. Today's one of those days where it's super, super tough conditions. I mean, you got zero to no wind on the surface as you guys can tell, and then you, you got bluebird skies out, which of course is in the best fishing, especially, 
especially for these pond fish. If I was out on Lake Lanier right now, I could be able to catch them a lot better. But right now, I'm telling you, these fish are going to be a little lethargic. They're not going to be chasing as much, but I'm still going to show you that I can go around here and catch those ones that are ready to bite. My whole thought process on this is, you know, you're going to fish a pond. In my opinion, I go on Google Maps, pick about three to four ponds to hit that day, and you literally just cover the water. Because if you set up the same one all day, yes, you might be able to catch them, but at the same time, I could hit four ponds and catch those active ones that I really wanted to bite in just the same amount of time, and you're covering a lot of water. Right now, I'm kind of in the process on figuring out how they want this bait. Pretty much right now, like I said, bluebird skies, these fish aren't gonna be too active right now. Um, the pressure's a little up. I'm pretty much throwing this bait at the top of the water. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start switching it up. I'm gonna slow it down, I'm gonna keep it below the surface, see if they want that better, see if that's a little softer presentation so this fish will eat it. Throwing it out there. Just like that first cast, switching it up. As you guys can tell, the same bait. It's just switching up the technique and figuring out what this fish want today. So bluebird skies are gonna be a little bit slower. Therefore, I stopped reeling at the top of the water and I was about to show you how I was gonna work that. Let me throw it back out there and I'll show you. If you guys are wondering, I know a lot of people are gonna ask this in the comments if I don't say anything about it. I just got a straight little lead bullet weight, EWG hook, this little swim bait. This isn't the best rig for this bait, but honestly, I'm telling you, when I go pond fishing and then I have a bobber stop, I saw some people asking what a bobber stop is. It goes on your line. See how your weight can freely move right now? What it does is it goes in front of that weight. So it holds that weight there so it can't go anywhere. So I'm keeping it very simple. Like this is not the rig I would throw out a lake or I'm just keeping it basic guys. I feel like people think about it too much. So as I was saying, I'm gonna throw this bait out here. Let it hit the water. And I'm just gonna stroke my rod up. So what that's doing with that little paddle tail is that bait, when my rod goes up, it shoots up, that tail's fluttering. And when it falls, it's going like this. Just simple motion. I'm not even reeling it. I'm just sitting here just, you know, dragging my rod. That's how I caught that fish. On the first cast. See how much slower I'm really moving this thing? At the top of the water when I'm reeling that thing fast, especially trying to keep this bait up since it has a weight on it. It's gonna be hard for those fish to catch up to that. Not really, you know, in a way, bass are super, I mean, they're super smart, they're super fast. But then again, when the conditions are like this, you gotta adjust to it. We spent too much time here. You see, I, I've casted about, I fan cast it out here, I fan cast it out there, fan cast it out there. See, this, in my opinion, is the, is the time that you wanna move. Oh. God, he just hammered it. I literally saw him eat it that time. Slam that swim bait right there. My point in these videos is to show you different ways to catch fish that people aren't showing you. Because I feel like everybody gets in the mindset of, you know, you throw a Texas rig on the bottom. Like, you do, right? That's what all of us know. Like, nobody experiments with new things. That's the thing. Everyone that throws a shaky head, they're known for fishing a shaky head on the bottom with a worm. You know, that doesn't mean you can't throw a little paddle tail swim bait on that thing and start reeling it like a little swim bait head. Like, I feel like people are so closed-minded now just because, you know, I talk about throwing shaky head with a worm and that means you pretty much can't throw a swim bait. I'm not saying that at all. That's why I'm making these videos is to pretty much show you guys different ways to fish these baits and to use these baits that other people aren't doing. Because that's the one big trick. I can tell you one thing, if you go to a pond that's fished a lot, and you're doing the same thing that every single other person's doing every single time he's went there the past eight years. But if you go there, and you might not catch him. If you go there with a new technique like what I'm doing now, you might end up whacking him because it's something the fish haven't seen before. Oh man. These little guys are little feisty ones, I can tell you that. Look at that little baby. They're so stubby. So stubby. Let's get a release on this guy. Talking about covering water, moving fast, this and this and that. I'm gonna give you guys one exception. There's a lot of vegetation right here. There's a lot of grass, as you guys can tell out there. All this little, little nasty stuff out there. That's gonna obviously hold fish, especially on a sunny day like today. They're gonna get up all in that. You got some shade in this corner. This is one point in time where I'm gonna probably switch up how I'm working this bait, make a ton of casts. I'm not gonna sit here and cast one time over this and say, all right, that's good, because I know there's a lot of fish in this. But when you guys are fishing open water, when you guys are just covering water in a pond, I mean, I'm telling you, just keep casting. Casting and walking, casting and walking. You hit a good tree that's like 10 foot long, it's laying in the water, it just looks so juicy. There are about five casts at it. 
maybe not five, throw about three, depending on how tough it is that day. Fish that tree out because that's something that the fish are going to relate to. But when you're fishing open water and you're just covering water in a pond, I just keep going. But when you see something good, stop and fish it for a second. I can tell you guys with this bluebird skies right now, all this little grass, all this stuff right here, and you got the shade back in this pocket, there's gonna be some fish right here. I'm gonna be switching up my presentation just because of all this grass. What I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna throw this on top of it and really at the top and see if I can get a bass to come out of that, especially in this little shade, calm, calm water in the back. That was insane. <laughs> that was crazy. He was exactly where I thought he was going to be too. So like I was talking about this shade back in this pocket and it has a little bit of grass. I'm talking right in the back of it right here. You pretty much have that grass up on the bank and then you have that water and that little shade. Right when I threw on the edge of that grass and that shade right there, that's where he was. I'm talking, I didn't even have to move that bait. Right when it hit the water, he was just ready to eat it. Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, there we go. A little fat one. A <laughs> little beautiful bass. These fish are so tiny in here. This is just perfect for me to teach you guys pretty much where to come. I don't have anyone bothering me out here, but pretty little guy. That's exactly what I was talking about right here with all this grass and just reeling that swim bait over the top of it. But there's one thing that I'm looking for. So if you look at all this grass, you can tell it's patchy. You know, you have a lot of patches. Right there, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of filled. There's a lot more grass right there. It's kind of patchy. Um, what I'm doing is I'm throwing that swim bait across there, reeling it above the grass because those fish will actually explode through that grass. I'm having to keep it at a fast pace just because of the weight on there, and I'm really having to move that bait across there pretty fast. But then again, I'm creating a reaction bite. When I see holes in this grass, as you can tell, that's patchy. So that's very, very thick. Right here is patchy. When I see those holes, I'm reeling it on the top of that grass, and when I see the hole, I drop my bait. I stop reeling it, and then I pop my rod. So what happens is those fish are seeing it kind of work above them, and then right when that bait comes off of that thing, that's when they're going to slam it. But that's why right when I reel it over that, I just stop reeling, pop my rod, and that fish engulfs it. That's exactly what just happened. Now, I'm going to back up my word, and I'm going to do it one more time. So just because I reeled this bait over the top of it does not mean I caught a fish, especially on a day like today. So if I see like any little holes, with this little Texas rig, I know it's a swim bait, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip it right in there. Flip it right in that hole like that. Find those little openings. Flip that bait right up in there. Kinda hop it, those tails are gonna flutter. God, that was, it took my whole swim bait. That was the hardest hit I've had in a minute. I'm telling you guys, that fish right there absolutely hammered it he's way out there in the middle for all that a little patch of isolated grass out there threw right in there i pulled my rod up once and that tail fluttered down and he just god he just hammered it i really hope that you guys are getting some tips out of this it's different you know because i know the last crawl video you guys have never seen anything on youtube like that and i'm sure you haven't like this either so that's my main goal here to teach you guys a new thing Right there in the middle. They're actually coming up eating some like dragonflies or something that was in the water. Man. There we go. Little old guy. <laughs> oh. That was right when it landed. Caught me off guard. Right out there is a little isolated grass out in the middle. If you ever see anything isolated out there by itself, you need to throw at it because there's fish on it. 100%. Didn't, I didn't even have to move it. He already had it. Oh. Two of them tried to eat it right there. Well everyone, that is some more tips on how to catch more bass while pond fishing. I showed you a little bit about, you know, covering water, moving super fast. That's like the number one thing that I believe in, especially when coming to ponds, like going to lakes too, I'm the same way. I'm just a super fast fisherman in general, but I cover a lot of water. Therefore, my bait's gonna be in front of more fish. I really suggest you guys go try that out if you guys are some fishermen that usually, you know, don't move around much, you usually fish super slow. I highly suggest you go out there and go try to fish fast one day and just cover a bunch of water and see what it brings you. But today was a tough day 
as in the conditions, but I still got some fish to bite by covering water. I caught like seven in a matter of 20 minutes. So that just shows you, you know, if I was staying here for 20 minutes, I probably wouldn't catch seven. I'd probably catch probably two or three. So that just shows I covered a lot of water, caught more fish. But if you guys want to see more tip videos, be sure to smash that like button. Be sure to click the subscribe button as well and join the team. And also hit the little bell right next to the subscribe button so it turns on post notifications. Thank you guys so much for the support. I love you guys so much. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. I got sky like the weatherman, uh I crack cars, get hella bears, uh I got a bra from the motherland, uh I got shooters with ass, uh I get it, get it, uh Anyway, uh Pull up skirt in the hurricane, uh I crack cars, cook every day, uh I get money, uh Every day, uh